I've reached China's westernmost border crossing, the inhospitable and remote Urkishtim Pass. I just left China, one of Asia's most hopeful nations, and crossed into Kyrgyzstan, one of its least. A recent snowfall has made the road treacherous, and convoys of trucks bound for China crawl by. I managed to survive the drive and arrive safely in Osh, Kyrgyzstan's second city. Things don't look like they've changed much here since Soviet times. This large bow peep on it is actually the exit to a leaky museum inside the UNESCO listed crags that protrude from the city center. The museum contains odd paper mache dioramas and stuffed animal heads. But what does it all mean? You know, this room that I rented. Uh, it doesn't even have central heat, but it doesn't matter because at least there's no babies crying and there's no Chinese food. The following day, I leave Osh and cross the border into Uzbekistan. I'm confused with my new surroundings. What's Central Asia all about? Sometimes it looks quite modern. But the roads are so full of potholes that it takes seven hours to cover the couple of hundred kilometers to the capital, Tashkent. I'm here in Uzbekistan, in Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan. I'm here with my friend Brenna, and we're wandering around the market. It's the most organized market I've ever seen in the world. Everything is neatly labeled. There's no blood on the floor, no feral dogs. Um, it's a really great spot to come to a bazaar. Brenna tries her hand at making some traditional Uzbek bread. The largesse of Uzbekistan's president for life, Islam Karimov, is evident everywhere in Tashkent. The city is littered with ruinously expensive palaces and squares that promote the image of a rich and powerful country. These monumental projects built in Karimov's name can't conceal the economic reality on the ground, however. Uh, there's been a bit of an inflation problem here, so when I traded some money on the street, I gave them a $100 bill and they gave me these huge wads of cash. The biggest banknote they have in Uzbekistan is a 1,000 som note, and that's worth about 30 cents. So in order to do any sort of transactions, you deal with bricks of money. This brick is worth about uh, $25. I didn't come to Uzbekistan to see the modern capital, however. So Brenna and I hit the road, continuing west along the old Silk Road. My mode of transportation? Tour bus. The first destination is Samarkand, the ancient capital of the Timurid Empire. Timur the Lame freed the local people from the cruel rule of the Khans and then proceeded to go on his own rampage across Central Asia. This is his modest tomb. And this is the tomb's gift shop. Nearby is the magnificent Rechistan Square. The square is flanked by three madrasas, which were essentially the universities of their time, while Europe was plunged in intellectual darkness. are here in Registan Square, one of the great centers of learning of the Islamic world. You can bribe one of the guards and they'll let you go up one of the minarets, so we're here climbing up the old minaret. Samarkand is also a place of religious pilgrimage. Along an avenue of ancient mausoleums is the tomb of a cousin of the Prophet Muhammad. It is one of the holiest sites in Central Asia, and a place of pilgrimage. It's time to pile back into the tour bus and continue westward. Up next is a trip into the countryside. If we can ever get out of this traffic jam, that is. I should have to get water to throw again. The commander, what the farmers are doing, the farmers. 